Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. So, he said to the man who has been wronged by somebody taking what could have been his in the will, say, beware of covetousness. Be careful of covetousness. Why? That's not the wealth. Concentrate on the wealth. Those ones will not be blessed. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. That's why I said, this is prerequisite to the parable. And he spoke a parable trying to explain to the man that he has a wrong concept of riches. You're going about to fight for your inheritance to be given to you. Maybe it's the senior brother sitting on it. He's trying to tell you, that's not the way to go about it. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. That looks like a bountiful harvest. He said, this will I do. I'll pull down my bands, take note, I'll build a greater one. There's nothing wrong in that. Even Isaiah 53 says, do what? He says, lengthen your courts, stretch forth your habitation, increase, expand, make room for expansion. So it's still in order. And I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, <laughs> You have much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. God said to him, you fool. Now, he's a fool. Why? That doesn't look like a fool. It looks like a wise man to the natural being. But God says, you are a fool. And says, you fool. This night, your soul shall be required of thee, that who shall those things be which you have provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich towards God. Then he said to his disciples, therefore, that means the story continues. But I'll stop there for now. The story continues, therefore. When you say therefore, that means he has not finished what he's trying to explain. He's not going further. Either to tell them what to do or what not to do based on the story he just said. So, he's called the rich fool. The question is, what did he do wrong? It looks very natural to me, whatever he had done. But God said he's a rich fool. Now, whatever he did is a law of sin and death. It's a doctrine of deceitfulness of riches. So this doctrine can send a man to his early grave. This doctrine, if it's not well managed... That's finances, can take a man's life. So it's important we learn one or two things from this story. Number one, he said to his soul, eat, drink, for you have stored up goods for many years. Let me shock you with what I have observed. I don't really have the proof for it, but I've observed it. When the Lord handed me the keys of death, he showed me, you know, some things the Lord will show you from the scripture. Some things you can't see from the, you notice from experience. When Brother Godwin took his daughter to India for the heart surgery, there were two other people that went with them, and they did surgery on the two other people. It was a hole in the heart, and the surgery was successful. When they returned, the surgery was successful and the children were okay. The parents committed an abominable act. And let this be a warning for everyone. I can't fully explain it why, but I've observed it. They bought clothes for two years for the children. Two of them died. And I've noticed when you store up for a long time, 
death is activated straight away. Instantly, I've noticed it. I notice if I have something that I don't really need immediately, that I store, and I plan to store for a long time, I start sensing the spirit of death. Why it is exactly like that, I don't know. <laughs> they saved nothing because the report they came with from India is, take her home to die. So there's no point buying anything in Exodus. Just buy a little, just in case, so we don't spend too much on investment. And she's still alive, nine years now plus. The other ones bought things for a long time. Death was activated over those children. It wasn't the hole in the heart that killed them. It was what they stored up for a long time that killed those children. Wealth is not to be stored for one's soul to enjoy for a long time. Once it happens, the angel of death is released straight away. Now, it may not take the person immediately because there are factors that will come into play. If, for example, the person took good care of his parents, the Bible says, if honor thy father and thy mother, it may be well with thee. Now, it has to be well with the person, so death has to wait. You may follow the person with a, with a sword to kill, but God said, no, he honored his parents, and because of that, you have to wait. You will kill him, but wait. <laughs> if he was merciful, the Bible says, mercy rejoice over judgment. God releases mercy over the man and tells death, you have to wait. He's enjoying my mercy. You can't touch him. But that will still release the angel of death straight. But that doesn't mean it will take the person immediately. It may take the person immediately if there are no parameters to prevent him. But if there are parameters, the angel of death will be following the person. And those who are perceiving spiritual can sense it. I entered an office. As I entered the office, I just felt death in the office. I said, ooh. Jesus, what is this? It's not done. Praise God. <laughs> so his number one sin, he kept so much for himself without planning any additional mouth to feed from it. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. These are the sins of the rich fool. Verse 11. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. When goods increase, they are increased that what? Eat them. He denied that and he had it all for himself. Your increase is not all for yourself. For having an increase, God has added mouth to those that will feed from it. And they must not be denied access. Otherwise, they will call on the Lord of Sabbath, the man of war. And James says, I will wage war with that man to his next generation. He says, the hire of the laborers whom you have withheld by fraud cries out to me. Number one sin. He kept all for himself. Praise the Lord. Number two, he did not give God his portion. God's portion was not involved in his planning. In Proverbs chapter 3, I read from verse 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your substance. And with the first fruit of what? All thy what? Increase. He had an increase. And God was not in the plan. God has a portion in that increase. And if you remember what God said, okay, your soul is required tonight. Let's see who will eat it. You know, when two people go into business, they go into a business deal. <clears throat> and they say, when the prophet comes, we shared maybe 50-50. Then the prophet comes, but it's in one person's account. Say, where's my share? He said, no, I have it all by myself. He said, really? Then he sends assassin to go and kill him. He said, let's see who will inherit the money now. That's the statement God was making. I will take you out, then we shall see who will enjoy it. Meaning, you don't give me my share, you will not have your share. 
That's what it is. It's, it's as simple as that. You don't give me my share, you're not going to have your share. It's a dead sentence when there's an increase. And God is <laughs> not giving his due. You must understand that you say command to honor God with all that increase. Why? He says that he's the one Paul said in 1 Corinthians. Can't you remember where it is? 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He says, Apollo said, Paul said, I have planted, Apollos has watered. God has given what? The increase. The increase came from God. And he has a share in it. That's why Jesus said, give to God the things that belong to God and to Caesar. Even government will increase tax from your increase. So God too says, I too I have my share. <laughs> and his name is Adonai, owner of heaven and earth. He says in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord, the fullness there of the world, and they that dwell therein. Psalm 50, he says the cattle is mine. On the thousand hills they are all mine. Haggai, chapter 2, he says the gold is mine. The silver is mine. So, I have given you, you must understand in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10 God giveth what? Seed to the sower, bread to the eater. Meaning in that increase there is seed and bread. Bread is what you eat. Seed is what you plant. God said give me my seeds. You eat your bread. Well you took both the bread and the seed and harnessed it for himself. God said well if that's the case, nobody's going to eat this thing. Nobody. And I'm going to give it to the person I like. <laughs> so, those were his sins. The sins of the rich fool. Why God took him out. You ask yourself, but I thought, if somebody commits blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, God should kill him. He will go to hell. It's not necessary law of sin and death. There are laws of sin and death that a man can die and still make heaven prematurely. There are laws that you violate, a man goes to hell, but not necessarily mean he will not live long. Rejecting Jesus is not a death sentence. It's a hell sentence. So a man can reject Jesus and live to 92 and go to hell. A man can deny God his own share and God kills him and he's a Christian and he goes to heaven. Denying Jesus is not the law of sin and death. It's a hell-bound situation. But not giving God his own money is a death sentence. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. I believe in the money you have, there's that which belongs to God. There's that which belongs to the poor, the less privileged. There's that which belongs to investment, which you should invest. Otherwise, you'll be in trouble with God. If you don't invest, they will come and take the money from the man. They won't kill him. If you don't give God his due, they will kill him. If you give God his due, you don't invest. God will take the money from the man and give it to who has a business mind to invest. So take the talent from him. If they didn't kill him and do what? Appoint his portion with the hypocrites and give it to the one with 10. That's Matthew 25. So in the money in your hand, there's a portion for God. There's a portion for the less privileged. There's a portion for investment. There's a portion for you to enjoy. He says he gives us things freely to enjoy. That's why he says if a man works hard and he does not eat and drink, God has denied him access to eat from it. So if God gives you the access to eat from it, then you should enjoy. So there's a portion for you to eat and drink. There's a portion for you to invest. If you don't invest and you use what you should eat, what you should invest to eat and drink, God will take the money from the man. And there are lots of people like that. They are 
inflow is less than their outflow. And God says that's an unprofitable human being. Take the money from him and give it to a man whose inflow is higher than his outflow. That's profit. And when you look at the outflow, it's not investment, it's luxury. God says you are doing luxury when your inflow is less than your outflow and you are still doing luxury. Say, take the talent from him and give it to a man who is better disciplined and will bring in returns. Hope you know that God is profit-minded. He will not take anything less. Said, I'm the Lord that God that teaches thee to profit, give it the power to make wealth. Amen. Amen. That's number two. Number three of the sins of the rich man. He had no resources or money in, this may shock you, in his heavenly account. Some of you have earthly accounts in Nigeria. I don't want to mention the banks now because um, if I mention their name and people start opening from watching this, they will, <laughs> they will say to me, my adverts. <laughs> Praise God. I think we have about 25 to 30 banks here, right? 26, thank you. Uh, 27. I don't want to start mentioning banks. They say you mentioned this, you didn't mention this. So, but you know the banks, right? We have banks in Nigeria. Internationally, we have banks too. Bank of America, HSBC, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Bank Corporation, Standard Chartered, and stuff like that. And you have international banks. Now, this may shock you. You have a heavenly bank. And if it drops to red, they will take the man home. If your account in heaven drops to below red, he's going home. It's a proof. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Oh, you don't know you have an account up there. Some of you's account is savings, some is current. <laughs> like those titus savings. <laughs> and those that give God freely from a great heart and they give him, don't believe in the own, the trust, they just give, they release. Those are the current ones. Those ones have um, referee, so they can transact, they can transfer, but the savings just the code pass book, you know. <laughs> Praise God. Philippians chapter 4. Say so this man say we have an account. Oh, yes, there's a bank in heaven, and there's an account there. I read from verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Notwithstanding, you have done well that you did communicate with my affliction. Now, you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again to my necessity. Please take note of what he's saying. Not because I desire a gift, or I desire fruits that may abound to your what? Account. It's not an earthly account. Now, go further to prove again. Look. Uh, but let me point something here, and you should know ministers that God sends to prosper his people. You heard Paul said, he said, I didn't call for an offering because I had a need in my life. I called for an offering because you needed to give. And so every church you go to, that every need in the church, they ask you to give, it's an error. They don't have to have a need for them to ask you to give. You give, not just to meet the no, to have money in your heavenly account. Paul, most, of, most of what we need in this ministry, we believe God for it. 90% of what you see, we didn't ask people to give. We didn't ask. Just one or two, two, three times. We didn't ask. And that's the order. You need camera, give. You need this, give. You need that, give. Something is wrong with that ministry. It says, my God shall supply all of my need. How? According to his riches in glory. By Christ, that's what Paul was saying. But I need you to give so that you can have funds in your heavenly account. Not because we are under pressure of need. So if you're in a church and they ask you to give every time they have a need... Something is wrong. 
That minister is not sound. It's not sound. Once in a while they have need, they will ask you to give, but it's not every time. It's to believe God to answer to those needs. It's to trust God. Most of what we have, we trusted God to have them. We believed God. Amen? Amen. That's why sometimes there is no need, and I come to you, you need to sow this. You've not seen it before? God needs something in your account. It's not a need on ground. There's no need on ground for it. In fact, sometimes you give something, and we don't know what to do with it. Someone gave a television once, and I was wondering, what do we do with this? Oh, I didn't know what to do. I said, okay, I'll pray. I'll leave it till I know what to do with it. Until I was with the minister of God. Oh, pastor, good morning. How are you? They were talking. said, we're trusting God at children's church. We need a television. As he said, we need something sparking me. I said, that is their television. Go and give it. I said, just hold on. Hold on as you are speaking. I'll be back. <laughs> the person I kept you with said, where is the television? You are watching it. Oh, yeah, remove it. Remove it. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Unplug, unplug. I collected it from the person was looking at me. I said, what's going on? Unplug, quickly, quickly. Boom. I drove it. Said, this is your television for the children's church. Said, God bless you. So I told God, must I go begging? You called me. Send me. I'm not asking for it. Send me a television. What? <clears throat> I don't know who followed me to go and drop the TV. Who was it? Was it you? Who followed me to go? I, I know it was... I collected it from one of you. But someone followed me to go and drop it. But someone, I can't remember, one of them followed me to go and drop it. I said, say, drop it. He said, hey, I, no. he said, are you watching? He said, we're watching. Switch it off. Bring it. Said, oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's how some people are caretakers like that. If God just keeps some things in there. Say, I need it. And I said, God, we're watching TV. You can't have it. I said, eh? And he said, I said, we're watching film. We need to know how this film ends. That man is chasing him. He has told him, we want to know how he ends. God, wait. God said, I can't wait. He said, no, you have to wait. Because with this movie, if we end it like this, it will be sweet. <laughs> Praise God. Luke 12. Luke 12, I read verse 33. He said, sell that you have. Give arms. Provide yourselves bags. It still sounds earthly. Which wax not old. So if the bag is not going to wax old, it can't be earthly. Because all earthly bags will wax old. A treasure in the heavens, which faileth not, where no thief approach, neither moth could. That means the money in that bank cannot be stolen. If the bank doesn't crash. It doesn't lose, uh, it's not affected by inflation. That's what he's saying. He said, save in bags that does not wax old. In the heavens. So you have a heavenly account. And you know, they said about the rich man, so shall be done to the man who is rich on earth, but poor. How is God going to assess your wealth? Not the earthly one. The heavenly one. So I know this account is in red. But the account on earth is in billions. But God said, no, he's poor. Take his life out. And the angel strikes him dead. They say he went to sleep. He didn't wake up. It's an angel of God. It's not Satan. It's the angel of God. Struck him dead. His account is in the red. King Belshazzar in Daniel chapter 5. The Bible says he was drinking with golden cups. That were taken from God's house, drinking. They suddenly, he saw a hand on the wall. Mene, mene, taken, upasin. And they, when Daniel was called to interpret mene, mene, and go to taken, he said, this taken means they weighed you. You are in the red, sir. You are done for. There's a heavenly account. And you must fund it. I'm, I'm God's marketer. Come and open your account in the sure bank that the interest can never be matched. They are trying, you know, all those wonder banks, they're trying to, they're trying to match God's interest. We cannot, they can't do it. You know, God's interest rate is strange. She says, one will put to flight 
a thousand. Normally, two should put two thousand. But two puts to fly what? Ten thousand. God's bank generates interest. How do I know? Jesus told the man with a single talent, you shouldn't have hidden that talent. You should have taken it to the bank where it would have gone what generated interest. And depending on how you store it, if you store it to the poor in the day of trouble, he will remember you. If you store it through the man of God, Paul said, my God shall supply all your need. If you save it through... So many, so many ways. That's not what to look at today. But there's so many ways to save into your heavenly account. We're not looking at that. So he was rich on earth, but poor in his heavenly account. Actually was, you know, you know Nigerian banks, I don't know how it is abroad. I, I, don't have, I, I don't know. But I know Nigerian banks. If you put 500 naira in the bank... And, well, maybe small, small activity. You know, they deduct a lot of charges here. They, you know, if you're not topping it, after a while, you just pay, somebody will pay 100,000. I just see balance 99,000. Have you seen it before? I say, ah, what happened? It's charges. It's charges. <laughs> it's not well-funded. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. He did not acknowledge God or give God glory. Proverbs chapter 3. I read from verse 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear God. Depart from evil. So he didn't acknowledge God. He didn't recognize the increase came from God. He ascribed the increase to his skill, to his knowledge, to his wisdom, to his power. God said, I will show you that it is not your skill, it is not your wisdom, it is not your power, it is of me. Having a wrong concept and mismanaging funds can be so dangerous that it can cost a man's life prematurely. So it's important we know how to manage funds. God wants to be a liberal giver, but he also wants you to be very prudent, even in your giving and in your finances. I believe you have been blessed by that message, and I know your faith has been built up, and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.